The Real Nerd Crusade against these talentless and fan-baiting localizers continues to rage on as we now have a video game doing the unthinkable, releasing two different translation sets, one by the more modern, updated for modern audience localizers, and one that is a more literal, direct translation as close as they can get. On top of that, a lot of individuals in, on X have tagged me in a video that they want me to go over with uh, Jamie Marchi, a localizer for Crunchyroll, calling individuals that just want you know, accurate translations, misogynists, racists, homophobes, Nazis, you know, the usual stuff. So things are getting really wild in the anime and video game industry when it comes to what nerds and real fans want versus what the industry is trying to give us, and we're here to report on it all. Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and let's get into this. But before we do, hit that subscribe button. Channels like mine, of course my channel as well, are the only channels out there that are trying to keep nerd culture free from the modern audience that's gripped Hollywood, and you know that we're going to do the best we can to fight for you, but we need your support to do it. So hit that subscribe button, and let's check this out. It's been revealed that a Crunchyroll director has called otaku who oppose terrible localization that's unfaithful to the source material, misogynistic, and Nazis. This is why piracy is morally justified and why I completely support AI taking over a corrupt localization industry, and honestly, I can't even particularly argue with that. Now, for very obvious YouTube reasons, I gotta say, you know, don't commit piracy, but, you know, we're all One Piece fans, we know what it's like to, you know, hit the high seas. Let's take a look at this video. It's a How's stroll it of power, and I appreciate it. Well, uh, I'm kind of scared to ask this question now because I don't want to bring them in the room. Um, uh -oh, so, okay. this is more directed at Jamie, but all of you can answer. Go, Jamie, all of you go. I'm excited like, about uh, it. I'm ready to bring down the room. Let's do we it. Need uh all right, and if you guys don't know who Jamie is, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys are new to the channel. You have no idea what's going on here. Well, Jamie, this is uh, Jamie Marchi, one of the individuals who got the renowned voice actor who I've met on multiple occasions. In fact, I've gotten to spend a very extended amount of time with, uh, Vic Mignogna. Yeah, got, got him fired for accusations of sexual harassment, sexual assault that can verifiably be proven never happened. So, you know, just so you know the type of individual you're dealing with, you're dealing with someone who is very, very pro the Me Too movement, including any and all false Me Too allegations. So if her ruining your anime wasn't good enough, th there's that as well. So that's who's answering this question. Um, Spotlight. So Funimation has come under, let's call it criticism oh, for criticism. how they choose to adapt their scripts oh, for like a couple of shows. Hate. Yeah, got it. Yeah, um, and a lot of that I feel is directed at you unfairly. Thank Directed at you unfairly. Simp harder, bro. Like, like this voice actor, she ain't gonna sleep with you. I know you're at an anime convention. I see that you're standing with kind of bad posture, a little bit of a slouch to you. You're gonna give yourself a hump back in your later years if you kind of look at his posture currently. But, yeah, I wouldn't say it's been undeserving whatsoever, especially when you hear her answer. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> So how, how would you like to respond to that kind of criticism? To the criticism? Like, I have a vagina. Deal with it. <laughs> Hey, uh, I hear they've been unfairly leveling uh, accusations about changing the source material. How would you like to respond to that? I have a vagina. Like, that that's how you're going to respond to that criticism? You had the opportunity to actually give an insightful, logical answer along the lines of, well, hey, certain you know, turns of phrases, they don't translate well from Japanese. We do have to try and do our best to find things that do fit within the lip flaps of the characters, that do stay within the same context, but, you know, just are having going to be changed slightly due to differences in translation. But no, she went with, I have a vagina, deal with it. If that doesn't tell you the type of individuals that are working in this industry, I don't know what does but but she's not done like it's honestly that's the truth uh, i am a woman i am a funny woman we are all talented funny powerful resourceful very beautiful self-sufficient you know, people who are actually funny, powerful, talented, they don't have to tell you they are funny, powerful, talented, or anything to that effect. Their natural charisma speaks for itself, so we can already assume she is none of these things just because she said she was them. I mean, that, that is the beauty of how the internet and the world of video works. We can take a look at individuals like this and be like, oh, oh, that's the person that's working on the anime that I haven't been enjoying lately. Yeah, that explains a lot. I mean, the, the level of narcissism that we see here. Oh, I have a vagina. Oh, we are all strong, beautiful, powerful women. Like, no, nobody said you weren't, for one. That wasn't even the question. So it just goes to show that even when you are being asked something that's rather innocuous, that's just a fairly normal question, you have to take it in some identity-laden direction that nobody cared about or was asking about. We wanted to know why certain lingo was changed. There's nothing inherently political about that, nothing identity-driven about the 
question in a vacuum, but that's the direction that Jamie Marchie chose to take it, and then chose to self-aggrandize herself by talking about how strong, beautiful, smart, funny she was. I mean, are, are these the individuals that you trust to work on anime when oftentimes the themes of anime are about helping others, or about looking inward to yourself and trying to better yourself? These people already think they're perfect. Clearly, they are not fit to write for something that actually has some sort of moral and emotional stakes when it thinks about the individual versus the collective themes that anime often tackle, but we'll continue. Deal with it. I'm sorry you're not getting laid. It's not about you. Move on. That's my reaction. <laughs> I'm sorry you're not getting laid, it's not about you, move on. So, so she has to add insult to injury on top of it. You know, first of all, you gotta realize, uh, read the room. You're in a room probably full of fat dudes with body pillows. The individuals who aren't getting laid, that's literally the people who are right there watching, sitting in the crowd watching you right now. It's not like, oh, the individuals that don't get laid stay at home on their computers and throw a fit while all the good nerds come to my panels and hear me speak. Yeah, no, no, no. The ones that don't get laid, what, there might be some at home on their computers as well, but there's also a lot of them in that room right there. So just knowing your audience is something that's probably very important in a live set, but then again, why would we expect them to know their audience? They clearly don't know their audience when it comes to doing their actual job in terms of the localizations either. So, yep, go out there, you know, it's not my fault you don't get laid. That's that's from Jamie's mouth herself, but keep telling your, your, yourselves that uh, these localizers, they're doing their best. They don't have any ill intent. They're not actively trying to ruin what you love. And if that wasn't enough cringe for you, we have got more localizers throwing a fit. Taking a look at this article, Western localizers upset over Riddy's River City Girl Zero offers option for more literal translation claim their work is being disrespected. In what may be the most ironic outrage in recent times, a number of Western video game localizers have taken issue with River City Girl Zero's inclusion of a more literal English translation alongside one which makes uh, takes more creative liberties, claiming that such an option disrespects their work. Explain to me how a more literal translation disrespects your work when it is your job to translate it the most you know accurate way you possibly can. While obviously there are going to be things that do not translate over correctly, that is what you are there for to localize it in a way that makes sense. But when your ilk often completely remove context or alter entire words or translations for your political or social benefit, that is not what fans are asking for. That's not fans. That's what fans have ever asked for. And it is not your job to take creative liberties with source material. It's your job to give us the source material in the best possible way while remaining true to the author's stance. Now, we're not going to go through this whole article. I am going to skip towards what a lot of these um, individuals, what a lot of these localizers were saying on Twitter. First and foremost, way forward, the individuals making this game, anyway, they, they, they laid out what this means. The new translation has the characters speak a bit more like, like they did in the originally translated games, whereas the literal translation is, a, is as direct a translation as possible. And now, we got Tom James here, homie who's a localizer, who is not exactly happy with the current situation. The thing I want to emphasize is, practical realities aside, I don't approach game localization like I'm composing the one true translation that can exist. Well, that's exactly how you should be approaching it, because there really only is the one version of the work. There is the author's original intent. Now, there are going to be some things that are lost in the translation bubble, of course, but that's where you come in. That's why you get paid the big bucks, Tommy boy. You get paid the big bucks to find the best way to make a single translation that it is most accurately representative of what you're taking from the Japanese. So if he says XYZ and you can't do XYZ, you gotta come up with the closest thing you can to represent XYZ without changing the original intent, meaning, or anything otherwise. There should only be one true translation and it should be the one that closely, that most closely honors the original artist's source material work and of course their art in and of itself. What you get when you buy my game is my take on the material, but not the take. No one's asking for your take, Tommy boy. No one gives a damn about your take. We care about the original author. It is their work we're interested in, and unfortunately, due to language barriers, the vast majority of people cannot experience their work directly, so we put our trust and faith and money behind you to give us the best version of that that is possible. We're trusting you for a job that you are inherently not doing when you're trying to give us your take. We do not care about your take. That gives me the confidence to be creative. It shouldn't. You, you should never be so confident in your creativity that you can take other people's work and think, yep, 
I'm gonna improve this. That is called narcissism, my dude. He goes on to say, in practice, many of my localizations exist in isolation, but not all. I don't talk about it often, but I get that with uh, Amagami the game. My LP isn't the only translation folks can experience or will in the future. That's okay. Neither takes away the ability for the other to exist. So if, say, Namco were to email me 10 years from now and be like, Tom, you and your team's previous localization of Tales of Arise bricks the PlayStation 6, we have to do it all from scratch, I wouldn't be broken up about it because my old work would still exist. But he's miscategorizing our argument. We're not saying there only needs to be one translation. We're saying if you're going to translate and localize it, do it right the first time and do not bastardize the author's work. That way if somebody else needs to relocalize it later or redub it or anything that needs to be done for the game on a later release, well, guess what? Most of the work is already done. The localization is not going to brick the PC, the, the PS6. It's going to be something in the code or whatnot that can be easily fixed. The way you script something isn't going to break a PC or a, a, a PS6. Do not you know, completely invalidate the argument by strawmanning it. But for me to have a career, for companies to trust me with their games and demonstrate the trust has been repaid previously, the work I do needs to be singular for that release. I need a publisher to show my product is sellable on its own merits and that they have my back. We well, you want to know what would show that your project is sellable? Keeping it as close to the original translation as possible since that's what the consumer wants. The consumer wants the original version of the game. So if your product is to be sellable, wouldn't you want it to be as close to the original version as possible since that's what individuals want to buy but due to translation issues they can't? We would like to be able to trust you to actually put something out that is as close as we can get to what the original artist intended. But we can't trust you to do that, Tommy boy. So yeah, now fans are upset and you want to throw a fit on Twitter. Twitter as if we've got nothing to be upset about when we actively hear your partner in crime. We hear other individuals in the localization game like Jamie Marchie just a few minutes ago say, I have a vagina, as if that's good enough to have a job that caters towards fans of other cultures. That's not how this game works, brother man. Whatever happens after the fact is a separate conversation. As long as the work is tangible and I'm credited, that's what counts. That is, as long as you're credited, because it's all about you, Tommy boy. It wouldn't be enough. Like, here's the dealio. If I worked on these games and I did a localization, I won't lie. I wouldn't even need to be credited. I would just need to be paid. Because my thought process is... It's not really my work. Yeah, I might be making some changes here or there for simplicity's sake to alter things for, for the different, uh, you know, for the Western demographic or the different demographic that be picking up the game. Uh, but I really shouldn't necessarily be getting credits for changing a few key phrases. Like, I, as long as I get paid and the pay is worth it, that's what matters to me. I'm not trying to turn someone else's artistic endeavors into my own sort of platform that I can put on a resume to be like, oh, well, look, I wrote this game. Well, no, you didn't write the game. You translated it. Anyone can do that if they know the language. How could a translator like me demonstrate my insight and creative autonomy is worth paying for if it has to compete with itself in its own release? You shouldn't have creative autonomy, you absolute dipstick i this is this is the level of narcissism that we're getting from these individuals they are making it all about them they do not understand bro we do not i we do not care about you we simply don't Again, for many logistical reasons, I don't expect so-called creative versus literal toggles to become a facet of the vast majority of game localizations going forward, but I hope it's a choice that more experienced publishers than uh, WF appreciate has grave consequences if handled poorly. Oh no, he's, he's upset because he knows the reality, he knows the truth, he knows the individuals are going to choose the literal translation because that's what they wanted all along, and now he's not going to get to spread his ideology in a way that's you know easily maskable. He can't sit there and spread whatever worldview he wants to inject into somebody else's art if there's the option for people to just go with the other art, the more literal translation, and that burns him up. What about Jen O'Donnell? Way forward to releasing their original River City Girls with new and literal English translations. People in the localization industry are rightfully upset about this decision. Rightfully. See, I, I, I thought the, 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 the old adage was the customer is always right. So why are you rightfully upset? We're the customer. You, you're, not, you're not the customer. You are the individual who is taking, you're the middleman. You're taking the, the art or the product that we want, altering it, then it's being sold to us. You got no right to be upset because we, as the people that actually pay for the product, are getting screwed by what you, the middleman, are doing. You don't have the right to be upset. It feeds into the myths and misconceptions about video game translation and undermines game writing. Well, then you would need to take that up with Jamie Marchie, who quite literally, just a few minutes ago, 
put for the world to see a video out there that says, yeah, we're here to stay and it works fine because we have vaginas. If that is your bar for what, uh, you know, this, this myth and misconception about video game translation, if your bar for what's acceptable is we have this red-headed bitch here who is able to go ahead and skate by and do whatever she wants with the source material because of what's between her legs or not between her legs, that's a very low bar for your guys' line of work, and yeah, we don't need you. And then we got Kevin Frayne here. I clicked on this thinking, I wonder how many people who aren't translators are going to bitch about the use of creative here and how it was basically the entire thread. Well, again... We don't want creativity. We want honesty. We want artistic integrity. Which, yeah, I guess you can have creativity and artistic integrity. But you guys don't showcase that. Kind of glad my translation career is over because we have the most ungrateful fans in the whole goddamn world. You don't have any fans. This is your narcissism speaking. You don't have ungrateful fans because you do not have fans. The original author has fans. The original author's work is the work that we want. All the fans are in him. I've gone to many a video game convention and anime convention and comic book convention. I've met fans of all different types of nerd media. And never once in my 30 years of being a nerd have I spoken to somebody and been like, Yo, who's your favorite localizer? You know, wh what, uh, what localizer are you a fan of? You don't have fans. And you shouldn't need fans. You shouldn't want fans. Again, you are narcissistic. I want to see a list of all these games supposedly infected by the translator's personal politics epidemic. For as much as I hear alt-right gamers drop this accusation, I've literally seen it in person. Which I real- I- wait, maybe he's supposed to say I've never seen it in person? He's saying he's seen it. Which I realize probably means it's BS, like most alt-right nonsense. So here we got Kevin Frayne just making the blanket assumption that, oh, it must be everyone on the alt-right complaining about translations. Bro! I remember people complaining about translations in 1990 freaking 9. I was 6. My thankful now, now to be fair, I did grow up in the in the anime, you know, in, in the anime realm. My dad's been an anime fan since the 80s, so I was watching anime very early. But I still heard this complaint in 1999 when I was 6. That all right, wasn't a thing in 1999. These localizers are breaking, and it is glorious to see, because when you have individuals on X that are constantly attacking them for their beliefs or their ideologies that they are injecting into these video games when that's not what we're asking for, yeah, obviously the industry is going to come crumbling down because, well, like I said before, they're just middlemen. We don't actually need them. I've watched plenty of fan sub versions of anime online, and... It works just fine. We don't need to be paying these narcissists a bunch of money to ruin the product that we, the fans, are trying to purchase. We'd like to actually put our hard-earned cash towards. And then they go to post on X like they are the victims when all they're doing is showing the world what narcissists they are, how they think of these products as theirs, when they did nothing to write the original version that we the fans want, but they want to complain about not having artistic freedom. If you want artistic freedom, go make your own art. There's a world of indie comics, of deviant art, of independent video game development, all these other creative endeavors that you could be getting into if creativity was your main drive. That's not what you want. Quit lying that that's what you want, because if that was the case you'd be working there no what you are doing is you're coming into this industry and you're wanting to claim its creativity to change other people's art because it's easier you want to take the easy way out because that's what serves your narcissistic need for followers and fans on x but those are just my opinions let me know yours in the comments down below or let me know on x where you can find me at bolt the word and please do subscribe i'm a nerdy news channel i cover nerdy news every day not always about video game localization or anime that's what it seemed like the last couple days but anything nerd related from movies music Music, anime, Magic the Gathering, you name it. It's all here in the Nerdosphere. Check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon. And this has been Words of Paradise.